brain cord, why we create. We are artists collaborating to integrate multiple art forms to create a space for healing. We're going to talk about the role of art as a creative outlet for emotional and mental hygiene. We creatives, artists, musicians, all storytellers. We use our art to heal our stories, outpouring the pain, cleanse not only ourselves reaching out from the canvas colors, music melodies, words whispered, cleanse the heart of those that see and touch the same story inside themselves, creating a lifeline to freedom. Brain Chord explores the impact of combining music, art, and poetry. When music, poetry, and art connects, it stretches and shifts our self-expression to a new dimension and supports our well-being. The merging of arts is a tool for creative expression that energizes and restores us. When we express versus depress how we feel we support our brain's health. When we express our emotions, it liberates us. Brain Cord podcasts are meant to fuel engaging exchanges that expand awareness and alter perceptions of our world and ourselves, creating the space for healing. One of the hardest things for us to do is to express our emotions, yet emotional literacy, understanding our emotions, is an important component to our overall well-being. Expressing emotions is healthy. As artists, our role is to express what others are not able to express. Anis Nin's quote says this best. The role of a writer is not to say what we all can say, but what we are unable to say. Brain cord is meant to be a backdrop to inspire and begin conversations about what motivates artists to create, how creativity feeds our resilience and allows us to share our feelings in order for us to thrive and to put our mind at ease. So Angela, can you share with us today why you create and what the role of art is in your life? Yes, yeah, Susan. So whenever I'm down and depressed, I find other than therapy, the main escape I have immediately is to create art in my basement. So if I feel depressed, if I feel anxiety, if I feel sadness, what I do is I just pick up a paintbrush and I start painting free flow. I just let my emotions flow and whatever I have to express inside my soul, I put it onto the canvas. And after I create, I feel a lot better. Do you usually have an emotion in mind when you're painting or how does that come? It's it's really like the, the way I create is abstract and whatever energy I feel it's expressed onto the canvas. So I don't really sketch anything out. I don't really pre-think of the colors. It just happens on the spot within one to three hours. So if I feel sad, I'll paint the sadness onto the canvas. And usually I start with darkness. So that's what it comes from. And then after that, it goes to the light. So the majority of my painting is about 90% light and about 10% darkness because overall I want to share uh, the positive side and how I can defeat mental illness and not just focus on the negative side. So Susan, how do you create and why do you create through writing? Well, writing for me, similar to your experience, it's always a way of uh, releasing that pent up frustration that I have inside if I'm anxious about something or I'm my mind is going 100 miles an hour about a specific issue or a specific topic that's really sort of weighing me down then I like to go to the pen and the paper and I find that when I find the words to express whatever it is that's bubbling up inside or whatever thought is is ruminating inside my head once I get it down on paper I feel lighter, I feel relieved, I feel more at peace, and I feel more calm, and I feel like I've expressed something that maybe other people hopefully can relate to. 
Yeah, that's very similar to me, actually. After I paint, I feel a sense of release. Like after my concussion, I had a hard time expressing into words what I felt. So I would just paint it on canvas. And after I painted it, I just felt like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders and not maybe not that the, the depression has gone away, but it sort of melted away for that time being. So I definitely feel pretty similar to you through art. Yeah, it's almost like there's a, a release valve that turns on when, when we pick up our tool, whether it's the pen or for you, the, the paintbrush on the canvas. And what, what I, uh, it's funny, like, do you ever go back and look at your pieces? And, and how do you feel when you go back and you look at a piece that you created when you were feeling a certain way? That's really interesting. Like I've looked at pieces I've created after my major concussions and I feel exactly at that moment I felt like I captured that moment that energy everything perfectly because when I look at it again I actually feel exactly what I felt back then and it sort of takes me to a dark space but I think it's really interesting it's almost like it's a photograph of that feeling or that emotion that was going on inside of you right? yeah, yeah yeah I feel that too I know like when I go back I started writing when I was really young and when I go back and I look at some of the stuff I wrote when I was like 12 13 years old I can almost picture myself at the kitchen table and I can see myself writing it and I can experience that emotion or that sensation and yet not be in it so much as when you're in it when you're creating it does that happen to you yeah it's sort of it's that saying a picture paints a thousand words is that what it is it's sort of like poetry and art everything is captured within that time and when I create it seems like it's the beginning of the sentence to the end of the sentence so that expression and that emotion I had I start and I end I never go back to a painting I never add details because I find that ruins the emotion that I was trying to express and that I was trying to release. Uh, do you have, are you similar in that way? Do you go back to your poetry? Do you do any editing? Um, not a lot of editing. Typically when I write it, it's just whatever's coming through and then it's done. Maybe sometimes I'll go back and look at my structure in terms of words. Maybe it's like how you touch up the colors on your painting. Then I go back and I touch up some of the words to make sure that the word is the strongest word to make that uh, feeling or emotion come through. Um, but not a lot, like there's not a lot of editing. Mental health is a subject that has so much stigma associated with it. And yet statistics tell us that one in five will suffer from a mental health issue in their lifetime. Personally, I think that statistic is misleading as unfortunately not everyone that experiences a problem seeks help or shares what they have a mental health issue for fear of being judged, treated differently, or due to the stigma that's associated with it. At various mental health conferences, I have heard the comment that if we live long enough, 100% of us will experience a mental health issue. This is staggering. It's important to take care of our mental health and practice good mental hygiene and good emotional hygiene, whether we have been diagnosed with a mental health issue or not. This is what BrainCord will look at. The role of art in our creative outlet is just as important as nutrition, exercise, and rest. Sharing stories of how art can be a tool to support our brain's well-being is what BrainCord will do. Our brain impacts our overall health and the more we take care of it the more it will take care of us we need to take care of it the same way we take care of our bodies it's interesting how we have similar approaches even though our art form is different thank you for listening and joining us today our next podcast we will talk more about our creative process create, create to, to heal, heal. Put your mind at ease.